Hello everybody, welcome to What Culture. I'm Scott, joined by Amy. Hello, hello. Amy Farm, we saw Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness, and there's a ton of stuff to talk about, so we're gonna dive into the meatiest things possible. This is a spoiler review, spoiler discussion. Just, you know what it's gonna be. It's gonna be all the things that, <clears throat> excuse me, everyone else is talking about, starting with the members of the Illuminati. So we're gonna run some stuff down. Me and Amy do have various thoughts on the movie overall, <laughs> but they will be threaded throughout this thing. Um, not throwing out the, the quote that it's one of the worst ones yet. Oh, Just uh, yet. People are throwing that about though. We I know, right? Be so hasty. Yes. So yeah, I don't want to get into all the negatives yet. I think it's going to be an interesting launch weekend. I'm very curious what the overall, what people think as they come out of it. Um, but let's talk about the biggest things in there. Like I said, starting with the Illuminati, which is, let's just run these down. John Krasinski is Reed Richards, which is one of the most fun um, fan castings made real things in MCU history. Um, you've got Patrick Stewart coming in as Professor Xavier again Classic. in his yellow wheelchair. Did that from, that's how he uses it, from the original animated series. Um, you've also got Black Bolt in here, um, played by Anton Mount, who um, I've never seen before. Me but neither. character's very cool, whisper stuff, blows people up, it's awesome. Um, Hayley Atwell as Captain Carter, which is um, the live action version of the thing, um, the version of the character from the What If series. Yep. Um, and also Lashana Lynch as Captain Marvel, um, who originally played uh, Maria Rambo, Monica Rambo, as uh, mother back in Captain Marvel. So what do you think of all this stuff, all these cameos, before things go in a certain direction? I think there was, <laughs> there was always going to be cameos, wasn't there? People were going to yeah. be really, really disappointed if they came to the cinema and they didn't see at least one big shocking cameo. So in a way... Not Tom Cruise, though. Not Tom not Cruise. Tom Cruise. The amount of people that have messaged me, especially after I got <laughs> to see the movie a bit early, which was a treat, may I say, mm -hmm. people would say, oh, I've seen Tom Cruise is in the movie. The other big one, Deadpool. Everyone was convinced Deadpool was in the movie. Yeah. And obviously no. I was like, oh, I cannot tell you. I could not tell you. And I was sitting there going, where are they getting this from? <laughs> no, neither of those things happen. The follow on from this scene is that they all immediately die. And yes. um, they're all used as a way to demonstrate Wanda's power. We'll get onto what happens with Wanda very soon. Um, but those deaths are very fun. They're one of the most fun parts of the movie. Um, I get some of the backlash. This is some of the negative stuff that I think will come out of the movie. People saying that, okay, so we're not necessarily using Patrick Stewart as this um, MCU's version version of um, Professor X. He's the Universe 838's version of yes. Professor X and not necessarily the one that'll be in the Universe 616, which is what we've been following so far. So there's all that stuff, but all these characters die in um, quite fun ways. Like Reed Richards gets peeled apart into a cheese string man. Really enjoyed that. Which is kind of fun. And, Obviously um, we've got the big, big flex of, yes. uh, oh, he can uh, blow you up with a mere whisper. And she goes, with what mouth? <laughs> oh, beautiful, wonderful. She does the uh, the Agent Smith. She oh, sort of like yes. does the thing, and then yeah, he tries to talk, blows his own head up, which is really cool. What do you think of all that stuff? Because we um, talked about before we started recording all the, the horror elements that are in here, and obviously the movie is talked about as the MCU's first horror movie. Um, where do you come down on that? Because I don't know if it is. I will admit there was a few bits that I did genuinely enjoy. There was a few mm. little uh, homages paid that I saw, and I went, that is nice. That's a nice little mm. nod there. But in general, they didn't really go far enough. And I know yeah. that that was their intention because that seems to be the reason that they replaced the director in the first place. When we initially mm. had Scott Derrickson mm. set right ready to make this whole thing very horror-esque. He was eager to make this almost the MCU's first out-and-out -out horror film. Yes. Um, and when he left because of creative differences, we can all take a very educated guess as to what those creative differences <laughs> were. So... We did still get bits of horror, and well, I did like the I like the gore. I like yes. that they they weren't afraid of now showing like the big squid's eye getting taken out. Yeah, that was a cool opening thing. Yes. There's a massive random giant squid fight in New York, but like Amy says, ended with uh, the eye being pulled out. But the bit when all the Illuminati die, you have Reed Richards being <clears throat> excuse me peeled apart. You have uh, Captain Carter being severed bisected. completely, bisected. Um, but the way that they cut around that is very your mind fills in the blanks yes. kind of thing. Um, the simultaneously kind of mixed with that fact of like okay, the MC. The MC is not going to show that, but they do show a bloodstained shield after it's gone yes. through uh, her. So you do get scenes like that. Um, it is interesting how much of the Raimi-ness is in here. Like you do get, it almost feels like his bag of tricks from the original Raimi Spider-Man movies with some of the uh, transitions, some of the editing tricks. Mm -hmm. And um, But Bruce Campbell was recently um, talking at one of, uh, a comic book event and he said that there were extensive reshoots um, that were done after his cameo scene was done. And so it feels like it. Like you it feels said, like- Scott was saying before, oh, I could see the reshoots. I oh, could yeah. pick out where they were. And I thought, oh God, maybe I didn't notice that. 
maybe I'm unobservant, <laughs> but I think that'll be more of a problem for some there's, people than others. Yeah, there's only one that's really obvious if you want to just have a laugh at how obvious the reshoots are. It's Wong's hair goes from being shaven indoors at one point near the beginning um, to a bit longer, to being back to being shaven again. Point being though that all the Illuminati are on stage, on stage, on screen for like five minutes. They're a nice yes. visual, it's cool. We get to see their uh, universe's version of what they did with Thanos, which is a really cool thing. Um, but we also reveal that their version of Doctor Strange was killed by Black Bolt, um, which is a whole other thing. Um, and so we can talk about the overall structure of this and dive into the likes of a new character, America Chavez, who I was like watching it going, have I missed something? Is this character, were they in, in, in the background of Hawkeye somewhere? Like what was this? Um, America Chavez is a new character introduced in Multiverse of Madness as the MCU's way of jumping between multiverses mm -hmm. after Doctor Strange has largely forgotten the events of everything in No Way Home. Now, I think this stuff is really sloppy and messy. Oh yeah. Um, really, really ridiculous movie just opens on America Chavez's power, just her going, I can hop between realms, to yeah. be honest. Do you want to go on a bit of a realm hop? And she couldn't be more of a plot device. No. They tried to make her less two-dimensional. She might as well be one of those books, that the she, book of a shanty oh, or, God, you know, yeah. just another book. She may as well have been a prop, really. Kind of. Um, and on the one hand, I'm like, okay, I understand why you did that. Mm. I don't really respect it very much. No. But you did it, it's happened now, there's no point complaining. Yep. But it was the fact that they tried to make her a little bit more fleshed out as a character. Like, oh, she was taken away from her home Got parents, planet. parents, guys. Oh, she has parents somewhere. <laughs> it's like- Which we're not gonna do anything with. Yeah, yeah we didn't do anything with the parents. <gasps> we had, no, we, she never spoke again about how she feels about things. She does like a 180, like in her first scene, she's sort of like, obviously she's been growing up by herself, learned to believe in herself. That's why she's more sort of sarcastic or whatever. She's like kind of that archetype but then as the movie goes on, she just becomes kind of more generic. It also felt like a really convenient way for the studio to like shoehorn in a few things that they could give themselves like diversity ticks on mm. them that they had. The yeah, the, one the, the first badge. thing you see is the pin badge. And I'm not dunking on that. I love a bit, I love representation. I'll, I'll advocate for that being anywhere. Yes. But wouldn't it be really nice if they had bothered <laughs> to make something. a queer character that had a personality or a background instead of sticking that on there, mm -hmm. being like, Whoa, she's got two mums. Yeah. And then, oh yeah, but her mums are in another universe. We're never going to touch on that again. I we did. We learned nothing about her. Yeah. yeah. Um, let's move on to uh, Wanda stuff. Now, um, some people are absolutely loving Elizabeth Olsen's performance here. What do you think? I might just go off the stance alone to say that it's a bit of a knockout, but it could be in both ways. It could be in an exhausting way. I've gone so far down the sofa, I've knocked myself <laughs> out of my own shop. I can't even point at it. I, I, ooh. Oh. If anyone followed our coverage of WandaVision, yes. I got really into WandaVision. Mm -hmm. I was there talking about it every week. I was excited, I was ready. I was really enjoying the kind of the development they were bringing to this character. The way we were getting to know more about her, yep. the way we got to experience her processing emotional grief. challenges. Yeah. yeah, she was processing her grief. She was making progress. At the end, of course, we get her flying off into the distance to avoid the consequences. Yep. But we also know that she has come to recognize that what she's done has hurt people, that it wasn't the right thing to do. Mm -hmm. She has grown. And then you get this movie, <laughs> and we go into nope. a little orchard with her, and Doctor Strange goes, oh, what lovely real trees you have. And she goes, psych! The first line that um, she has is, um, you know, I hurt people, I'm sorry, and whatever. But then they completely changed that. I don't know if it was a reshoot thing, I have no idea, but they completely changed that to also almost retcon WandaVision and say that the Scarlet Witch, um, as an overall entity, is this sort of multiversal force that has possessed her, and the real Wanda is buried underneath that psyche, as is explored by Professor Xavier when uh, he goes into inside her mind. So that almost kind of uh, like eliminates all the yep. progress and the maturity of WandaVision, all the themes that were explored It there. also, for me, took away some of the agency of Wanda as a character. Yeah, totally. If we're saying that it's more of this like multiversal witch possession kind of thing and the real Wanda is stuck under some rocks in her psyche. <laughs> also, I mean, at that time, I was also wondering if that wasn't the metaphor they were going for it. They were more going for like, this was a trap all along to get mm. Xavier to come and like rescue yes, but... fake Wanda. Mm -hmm. um, but like, it, in the same way, even if it isn't like a a possession type thing. It removes all her, like, her emotional development, mm. everything she learned, all these relationships she built, mm -hmm. um, and just reduces her to, like, a nothing. And it reduces everything that happened in WandaVision to a nothing. It's, it's, they, they do a lot of, because it's weird, like you said, that could absolutely be a trap for Scarlet Witch to uh, catch and kill Xavier, which is a cool death. Yeah. Um, but we have other characters talking about the power of the Scarlet Witch, the multiversal power of the Scarlet Witch. So it seems like they're still building to this overall idea of the Scarlet Witch being an entity um, around Wanda or whatever, active in the 
MCU in and some other way. And that was very much similar with the fact that she was enshrined in the stone already. Yes, exactly. This was always my destiny. Destiny and fate is such mm -hmm. an easy way to almost completely by accident remove any depth or choice from yeah. a character. It was just, it was a weird beat and they needed to do, um, you know, we mentioned the horror stuff and they do have, like, Raimi has a lot of fun with uh, making it so that uh, Wanda does, uh, it's called dream walking where you sort of possess a different version of yourself in a different reality um, and we have the Scarlet Witch version of Wanda possesses the version of Wanda from the other universe, Universe 838. She's over there in 616 and then the 838 version goes on a rampage to reclaim uh, America Chavez. Um, what do you think of all that stuff? Because her whole motivation at that point and the entire movie is to get her kids back but obviously her kids were never real and you have Doctor Strange telling her that but then in the other universe they are still there oh. but she would have to have still gone through all the stuff to create WandaVision but then be chill about it so I don't know. Well it's the way they tried to talk themselves out of it yeah. like they dropped in a few lines about oh but Wanda you know your children aren't real and then <laughs> but they are in but every are. other universe and it's like oh if we give you this one sentence explanation of like, they are, they're real in other universes. <laughs> you don't have time to ask how, why, or what implication this has. Mm -hmm. No implication, it's other universes. And you don't need to worry like, about it. It is meant to be that like, you're trying to be saving her from herself. I get the whole like post Thanos multifaceted villain, like whatever. That's an interesting, obviously always an interesting way to go. The villains have more to them than just an evil cackling plan or whatever. Yeah. But they don't do anywhere near enough with that. It's not like she has a conversation with her other self, the one that is also living a lie, but isn't pursuing it in the same way or whatever. Um, they don't do anything with the multiverse setup. We really really like walk the line between what is her sort of mind power concoction thing, the mm. WandaVision thing, and also what is actually real. Like, yeah. it's just she sort of flies out of, her, of that universe's version of the WandaVision fake TV show to fly into the real version of the um, space between worlds or the realms yep. to access the book to do one of the final fights. There's just a lot of weird plot inconsistencies with this stuff. And even as we talk about it, it sounds messy because it is the product of extensive reshoots and multiple yeah. films. I mean, it's always one of those things where you want to reward ambition. And I get that, you know, Sam Raimi's return, especially to a Marvel theme property or whatever is a big deal and um, you can see the raminess in there it's just it's very spread out it is yeah. in itself quite bifurcated by the fact that it has to still become this wider thing oh my god professor x oh my god you know fantastic four whatever um but because all those things go sideways and they don't really run with any of the character development stuff it's very telling that we haven't talked about doctor strange himself at all because he gets one actual scene towards the end where he finally talks to a different, um, you know, Universe 838's version of uh, Christine and has an actual scene. And I was yeah. like, oh my God, an actual scene. Like, finally an in this film. An actual scene that's about Doctor Strange, who's got his name in the title. Mm -hmm. It's because that, to me, just illustrates as well the fact that so much of the movie was just, like, glossy over... They took, like, a really simple block of concrete that was mm. this plot, this mm -hmm. really safe predictable, annoyingly straight They could have had fun with it, you know, they could have done the multiverse thing, cameos galore, they could have done that stuff. And they covered it in this glaze of uh, some cameos, a mm. little bit of gore to make you think that they're doing something different, <laughs> these new characters, mm. um, all their, their classic like cynical humour, a couple mm. of uh, scenes where we see them going through universes but getting no elaboration on that whatsoever, yeah. Ooh, one of them's paint. <laughs> um, and yeah. because they've done all that, we don't recognise that what's underneath it is just concrete. We absolutely need to talk about the fact that for a movie called Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness and in the same release period as Everything Everywhere All at Once, a movie that is drastically better in regards to multiversal philosophy and everything else, go see that movie, oh my god. Um, this movie is not about a bunch of different universes, no. it's about one. They go through, there's a cameo, there's a, sorry, there's a montage where they go through a bunch of different universes, like Amy said, and there is one where they turn into pain for like, like a split the, second. I like Meet Cubaverse. Meet Cubaverse is cool, like all the things that were in the trailer that made you think they were going to be going to all these different yeah. places with all these different versions of that was Strange. Cheeky, that was. It's very cheeky. Like the short haired version of Strange dies oh. in the very beginning. Yes. Um, we don't do anything with all the different universes that we see. Instead, we go through all of them to get to Universe 838 and then we stay there for the rest of the movie. It's, like, it's a very good hook. And obviously, um, there was a whole thing about um, Doctor Strange's trailer numbers on YouTube had this massive spike alongside Thor. People did still care about the MCU, even yep. though the recent TV shows haven't gone down very well. And that's interesting. But the reality of the movie is that it's, you know, you're multiverse hopping into one specific reality. And then we spend a lot of time just walking around. Like, um, things like that, I think, come across as just being inconsistent and sloppy and messy in regards yep. to the script overall. And it all just felt incredibly contrived. Just weird. And the thing as well, too, a very quickly touch on uh, the Bruce Campbell cameo. And it's not that Bruce Campbell's not having the time of his life. The post post credit scene is quite <laughs> fun. Um, it's weird, though, because the thing that they do, they have Campbell um, interrupt Doctor Strange and America as they're walking down the street and say, hey, you must have stolen that costume because Doctor Strange has died in our universe. And that's the memorial thing. What are you doing? And then Strange makes him punch himself in the face for three weeks. 
That man didn't have a solid meal for three weeks, nor did he see his family or leave that spa. I just felt sorry for him. I was just like, I get that that it's funny, thing. but... I don't get me wrong. I love Bruce Campbell. I thought it was yeah. so fun that he was there. I think he did a really fun bit. I was like, oh, Raimi got his way. You were in. <laughs> but at the same time, I was like, is that not, is that not a bit off character for Strange? Like, we all know who that is, but like... Vengeful and mean? Yeah, no, Like, why would he do that? Especially in that moment, because he's just been thrown through the universe. He needs to try and save everyone else. And he's just stuck there going, yeah. like, well, I'm going to torture this guy instead for three weeks. Yeah, it felt incredibly overkill. <laughs> um, and yeah, it was nice getting a little gag payoff at mm. the end. A very, like, tongue-in-cheek looking at you and saying it's over. I, I enjoyed it. I thought he was fantastic. But uh, what, what was that? I don't know. I mean, the thing is, we can talk about post credit stuff, too. The second one is what Amy just said with the Bruce Campbell, just punching himself again, saying, oh, my God, it's over. Feels like something that just he said on set and they mm. just sort of left it in. And um, the mid credit scene is Charlize Theron's debut as yep. uh, Claire or Clara. Claire, I, I believe. I've been saying Clea because it's that's Claire. how I've been reading it. Um, who debuted in the 60s, I think 1964 as Doctor Strange comics, um, who is almost like an equal or someone who can sort of mm. tango with Doctor Strange. And um, the two of them leap back into a tear in reality, which looks a lot like uh, the Doc dimension from the original Doctor Strange, um, the one where maybe Dormammu is still there or whatever. Um, and that's kind of just where we end. Um, what do you think of that stuff? Well, I was like, just like, yeah, okay. I read up on that yesterday because when I first saw her, I was like, I know you, but I can't really remember what I'm <laughs> um, But on reading about it, yeah, people are pretty sure that they're mm. going into the dark dimension. Um, to the, bargain, I assume? Yeah, like, what are they doing there? We don't really <laughs> know. I was like, there is a lot of ways that that could go. Yes. Um, so in that respect, it is a good mid credit scene because it does open up quite a wide rift um, yeah. for us to go into. There's lots of things in the dark uh, the dark realm that mm -hmm. can be interesting, um, especially when you look through the comics. There's lots and lots of stuff mm. in there. There's lots of history of all of this. Cool visuals as well. I don't know. It's a bit flat the way they do it. It, it feels flat, yeah. it feels like a reshoot. Because it's, it's cool that they got Charlize Theron, obviously massive A-list actor, and it's really cool that she's there. I just thought her... Um, it was cool that her thing was to like tear holes in Yeah, it. she's just tearing through that reality. That's very cool. They do a lot of stuff just in the middle of New York, though. Like, yeah. just sort of, like, just tear reality. Everyone's just, yeah. oh, there they are, tearing reality oh, again. Okay. Don't worry about a giant squid, anyone. Like, it's things just happen now. Um, we should also talk about um, zombie Doctor Strange. Now, uh, zombie Marvel character is obviously a big deal. One of the What If episodes is all about zombie MCU stuff. Um, what do you think of that stuff? Because they do a whole thing where regular Doctor Strange beams into the other version of himself, uh, dream walks across and resurrects himself. The second that body version got uh, buried, I knew he was going to punch through. I was like, that's going to be a, a Raimi 101. I loved it. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I know. All of my, like, fun. every, like, logical thought in my brain is like, Amy, you shill. <laughs> you mark. You fell for it. That's this is exactly all you needed, is it? Just Literally. zombie strange. But as soon as he was like, who said they had to be alive? I was like, <laughs> oh, yes. Resurrect him. And he, like, but and you get the moment where his hand comes out. And I was like, is that, yes. is that the evil dead? To be, uh, oh, that's a good point. To be fair as well, um, taking all these souls of the damned and sort of re-threading them into, like, a yeah. new cape, that was really cool. Um, yeah, visual-wise, awesome. Visual I just wish, wise, it was I wish they did more because, obviously, um, in the trailer, you get to see the multi-armed version of him, yeah. um, which is still the sort of the biggest shot you get kind of yeah. thing when he becomes uh, Zombie Strange. But still, as something that, again, very cool fan service. Like I said, a lot of people love the zombie comics and stuff. Um, it was a good way to go. It's, like, an interesting thing to throw in there. Yeah. Um, quite random, but it worked. Um, and it kind of goes in with the whole horror thing. Um, like alongside all the zombie stuff they do with Wanda when she's storming the uh, complex near the end, all the shuffling and everything Did else. Did people like... react to it in the cinema for you? Not really, to be honest. I The cinema I was in were very, like, okay. Yeah. Kind of like I was. I was just kind of, like, going with it. Like, we've, we've not been that, that negative <laughs> about this video. No, um, I mean, I'll be the first to say I had a good time. Yes, okay, so I very much didn't, but that's a whole other thing. We'll do, we might do a video on it. I'm going to see how the general reception is it um, to this movie is, because um, I want to see what other people think of it. The reviews are all over the place. Yes. I'm firmly in the, it's an absolute pile stem category but and I'm whole... desperate to know what everyone says about yes. it yes that's the whole thing so I'm curious how the launch weekend goes um, especially because some of the early responses have been quite mixed anyway um, it's a thing but let us know what you think down in the comments below at this point hopefully you've seen it um, what do you think of Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness for now I've been Scott from WhatCulture.com I've been Amy also from WhatCulture.com and we'll catch you very soon <laughs> bye bye